Really quickly before I start this video, I just wanted to announce that my official shop is live at catsplanner.com. I finally have a shop of my own and there you can find my stationery and washi tape sample grab bags, anime Penton cards and my brand new sticker sheet designs. I also updated my Ko-Fi tiers in case you want extra content and products and support me in a more personal way. The link for my shop is at the description below and I have a 10% discount code for the first 10 orders of my shop. Thank you so much for all of your support and for making this possible. Now enjoy your video! Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Kat and today I'm going to be doing my bullet journal flip through for 2023. So when I'm filming this, it's currently the 29th of December, so I thought that would be the perfect day to do a flip through of all my pages because I'm not going to do any other pages in my journal for this year and I'm really ready to move on to my new 2024 bullet journal. So in case you didn't see my setup for January and for my 2024 for collections. I'm going to link the videos in the description below, but this video is just going to be about my pages and setups and themes for 2023. So if you've been a subscriber to my channel for a long time, you know that I always do these videos to look back at the year and give you some inspiration for the following year, because even though these pages are from 2023, you can do them in 2024 if you feel like it and if you enjoy them. So don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and make sure that you comment your favorite theme in my bullet journal for this past year. I hope you enjoyed this video and let's get started with everything that I used for 2023 as my bullet journal. So for this year, I decided to go with the Inoki Notebook by Notebook Therapy. This is the cover that it comes in and it comes with two, I mean three inserts. I use the grid one and the blank one, but they also come with a craft paper one. I left that on the side and I used just two inserts. And this grid paper is the first one that I'm going to show you because this is where I did all of my collections for the first six months and then I use the plain one as like my to-do list for the day or for the week. I can't find the notebook anywhere but it just had some to-do lists and daily logs which is not that interesting because it's just a black pen doing my weekly spreads and I decided to separate my monthly collections to my weekly spreads and daily logs just because I thought that this notebook was not going to last me for six months. Um, with the weekly spreads inside. So for that reason I separated them. I kind of recommend you to try it because it is a fun way to just have a collections in one side and then the weekly spreads on the other if you don't want to mix them up. Uh, I'm not going to do that again because I don't really feel the need to anymore, but I'm glad I tried it because every year and every time that I change a bullet journal I try to change a couple of things here and there and try new things and I'm really glad that I did that for 2023. And I'm going into this notebook in a little bit, but first let's get started with my first six months of the year and all of my collections. So I really like this paper because it's really thick, it's just like paper from Notebook Therapy Notebooks if you're familiar with them, and even though it's a little bit on the off-white color, I still like to use it because it was really soft to the eye. So this is my first cover page for the year. It says believe in yourself, trust the process, which is something that I really wanted to focus on for this year. And I feel like I did because now it's the end of the year and I feel like I trusted the process a lot and I believed in myself and everything is working out so well that yeah, this really worked out and I used a bunch of stickers and ephemera from the Inoki collection that they released. And all the setups that I'm going to show you here are going to be linked in the description below, so if you want to watch a specific one and know what products I used in a specific theme, you can watch the video because everything is linked in the description of those videos. So this was my cover page. I did my future log and I don't really use future logs, but I always feel the need to have one in my bullet journal. So yeah, this is what my future log looked like. I really like the simplicity of it, but you know, I don't use them a lot, but I really like that the pages were really filled out like this. And I like that I used calendars for the future log. It was really fun, but I just don't use them. So future log is not something that works out for me. Then I had my future events and future tasks and my yearly tracker that I stopped filling it in. I was really good at my mood tracker for the whole year for 2022, but this year I just couldn't fill it in in June, so I just stopped doing it. 
not proud, but at least I'm not filling in the squares just because I just completely stopped filling it in and I gave up on this idea. But if you want to try it, I highly recommend. And if you're looking for more ideas of pages to do in your bullet journal for 2024, I have a video on my channel that I posted last month all about the pages that you can do and pages you can try and layouts and stuff like that. So I'm going to link that video in the description box as well. Then I have my memories page. I haven't done this page for the second half of 2023, as you will see, but I will do it soon and post it on my social media. So make sure to follow me on Instagram. This That's where I post mostly of my photos. So I really like doing this memories page. This is just for the first six months of the year. And as you can see, I traveled a little bit and I did a few new things. So yeah. I just really like looking at these pages and I don't know if you can see but these pages the and I don't know if you can see but the photos that I used are printed with the Xiaomi printer the pocket printer portable printer I'm going to link the in the description as well because I always receive a lot of questions about what printer I use I use the Xiaomi one it was a gift from Christmas and I just use it a lot for photos and stuff like that. It's really good. The only thing that it's a bit expensive is the refills of paper, but because I use like half the size for a photo, I can duplicate the outcomes of pictures. So yeah, but I really like this printer. It's really good quality and I highly recommend you try it if you're looking for a portable printer. Then I didn't do anything and I always leave a couple of pages blank between my collections that I do on my setup and my monthly ones because I never know if I want to include some extra collections throughout the year here so I always leave them blank and that's a tip that I highly recommend you to implement in your bullet journal for the next year. We start with January and as you can see this theme is extremely on the minimal side. I just did a couple of butterflies and collages and I always start the year with minimal pages because I just never know what I'm going to fill for the year. So I never want to go full on with my themes. I just like to start small and I just use a couple of pens for the setup because I wanted to keep things simple and I wanted to just do the essentials in my bullet journal. Then here we have my habit tracker and this is my fitness tracker. So I would track what things I would work out. I currently don't do my workouts like this, but at the time I was trying to implement a workout routine and decide on a plan, so that's what I did. And here I just have my habits, and if you remember, these are for water, exercise, study, outside, no junk food, and bullet journaling, I believe. I don't remember because I don't track these habits anymore. But yeah, super simple, super like minimal and easy to do. And this year I also started to do my watching and listening spreads. Um, mainly because I wanted to re-watch anime again and I didn't know how to force myself to do that. So I just did a page in my bullet journal to track what animes I was watching. I didn't finish any of these. Um, and for my Spotify, I had like the weeks for Discovery Weekly because I was really into the Discovery Weekly part of Spotify. I don't have... Spotify Premium anymore, so I don't believe I have Discovery Weekly. I stopped listening to new music, to be honest. Uh, but I have here different bands that I wanted to listen more of, and I enjoyed Typo Negative a lot. And this is my memories page for January. Again, this is printed with the printer, and this is the normal size of the pictures. And I sometimes just print two on the same picture and cut them in half to save some paper. Then I have February and it was really similar to January because I wanted to keep a theme in my bullet journal to do the simple spreads. And if they worked out in a previous month, why not doing them in the second month? I used to change my layouts and trackers and stuff like that in my past themes. Like I felt like it was really boring for you guys to see the same setup over and over again as the months go by on my channel. Um, so I was always changing layouts and trackers and stuff. But for me right now, if something works out pretty well, I'm going to keep doing it. And it works better for me. And this is my blue journal. And that's 
the mindset that I have right now and that I should have had all of these past uh, years. But this was my theme for February, more on the vintage and floral side. And I did the exact same pages for February that I did for January. Um, with the exception that I added a little bit more of decoration. Then I have the listening and watching um, section here. I was really into watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine and I feel like this was not the first time that I watched it, but I don't remember. Uh, but any shows that I wanted to watch were in here. And this was my memories page for February for Valentine's Day. It was the most perfect Valentine's Day of my life. And then we have March, and this was a collaboration with Takti, which is the brand of the notebook that I'm using for 2024. I really like their products because they are really minimal, black and white. They are really my style. So I used it for March and I wanted to do it on a minimal side, but more complex. So I used a couple of more um, quotes and I added a few more designs with stamps and I added a focus section and a dismount section and this thing stuck with me throughout the whole year because to-do lists for the month are just essential for me and I really like this layout right here and I did it for I think all the months until the end of the year. Then I have my tracker and my fitness and this was at the time that I changed things up and I was just doing a couple of trackers here and painting the days because this is way more satisfying than just putting a cross on a box. So I really like this and this is my fitness tracker where I would log all the workouts that I did and how I felt and reasons why I didn't work out on that day. And this was the, I want to say the first step that really made me feel accountable for the days that I work out and the days that I don't and why. And basically just being accountable for the workouts that I do and when I take breaks from the gym and everything. Uh, at this time, we weren't at the gym that we are right now, but I just wanted to get used to working out. So when I would go to the gym, it was not like a huge change. So yeah, I really recommend doing a fitness log like this. And then the same pages again. I ended up watching Breaking Bad. I didn't finish it, but I really like it. And I love Only Murders in the Building. It was probably my favorite TV show that I watched this year. I really liked it. And my memories for March. And we start with April. And April, as you can see, I went a little bit more on the decorative side. I used this Light Academia collection from Notebook Therapy and it was just so perfect for this theme. I loved it so much. So yeah, this is my theme. I have my reminders here instead of a focus section. I did a reminder section, which is basically the same thing. And a to-do list for the month. My habit tracker on the side. My fitness tracker here as well. We were being consistent with the themes and spreads and layouts and such, uh, which makes me feel really positive about my journaling because I'm not changing things just because of views and YouTube. I'm doing things that I love that work out for me and that should be the essential of a bullet journal. Then I have my memories for April. We took uh, some vacation time in Mecco and it was the best time as well. And then I start with May and at this time I didn't do uh, my listening and watching spread because I already gave up on it. So we start with May and I'm using a Sakura collection. I think this is one of the Inoki collections by Notebook Therapy and it was so pretty that I filled my entire bullet journal with pink, which is not normal for me, but I just really liked how it looked and it was so pretty and delicate. So yeah, I used it for my May theme and I changed things up a little bit again, but here I did my uh, memories for the month and my fitness tracker for the month as well. And as you can see, I'm pretty consistent with it. Uh, and I think here was when we signed up for the gym, if I'm not mistaken. Or was this or it was in June? Speaking of which, this is my June theme and this was inspired by Portals, the new Melanie Martinez album that came out this year. I really like the green and pink 
color palette of the album so i did my june theme which is my birthday month inspired by melanie because she's one of my favorite artists and i just wanted to contribute to um, the hype of the album and do a theme inspired by it and i i just loved it so much it's really simple really earthy and fairy type theme but i just i love the album and i wanted to create a theme inspired by it then I have my memories for June, my fitness tracker, and this was my birthday cake that says live, laugh, lobotomy, which was a joke between me and my boyfriend because we are really like dark and we love things related to death and dark humor. So he made me this cake and it was so funny. And we moved in together in June, like the end of June, beginning of July. And yeah, this finishes up my bullet journal for the first six months of the year as you can see i didn't have any weekly spreads or daily logs here because there was in another notebook but yeah this was my first bullet journal of the year let's get going with my second one okay so this is the notebook that i use for the second half of 2023 i kept it in the case because i'm still using it and this insert is actually not from notebook therapy's you know key collection um this is from the travelers company as you can see the travelers company because the Inoki notebook was out of stock when I needed a new one for July um, and forward and so I got on Amazon and I got a travelers notebook one um, it's a bit different from the notebook therapy one the pages are pure white and they are not as thick as a notebook therapy one so yeah it was the cheapest version of it but yeah, I still used it for six months and I liked it, but it's not as good of a quality as a notebook therapy one, but it's just good and it's a cheap alternative if you want to try a traveler's notebook size insert. So this is my cover page for the rest of the year and I really like how it turned out. I got a custom stamp with my face and my logo and I just had to use it in my new bullet journal and yeah, it was like my mantra for july i guess um i just wanted to do simple things oh and this one this insert has squares on it the other one here also had squares but as you can see the pages are a little bit on the off white as you can see i think you can see the difference and these ones are white but they are both with squares i took a break from dots of 2023 but yeah uh i chose squares because the dots were a bit more expensive so i just went with squares it's the same thing uh, i did my future log again and as you can see i couldn't use it as much uh but i've tried to track a lot of things but again i just don't use a future log so yeah but i really like the design this was one of the things that i liked about this page I did the same thing, future events and tasks, and I tried the yearly tracker for my mood, but again, just didn't work. I tried once again, didn't work out, so I just didn't even do one for 2024, but it's here nonetheless. And I also didn't use this, uh, which is a new thing, because I normally use this thing a lot, but I just didn't, so yeah. So this is my memories page that I still have to do. Uh, it will be up sometime in January on my Instagram, but I just didn't have the time to do it yet. Then this is a new collection that I added because we were moving into our new house and I just needed a space for my brain to dump ideas. So I have here like home stuff that we had to do, things that we couldn't forget to do, things that I had on paper but I wanted to turn digitally, and extra brain dump for anything that I wanted to remember and I couldn't forget. I also didn't use this a lot because we moved everything to Notion and we now don't use Notion for our house. I mainly use it, we don't do it together, but it's just something that we don't need any extra lists for. So yeah, I use this for July mostly and then I just didn't touch this page for the rest of the year. I left a blank one and I start with July and July was mainly for me to um, understand what I wanted to 
do in my bullet journal as in a new house. Uh, so I knew that I wanted to have like a to-do list for the month and my living together bingo spread. But in terms of spreads, I didn't know what others to add. So I just did these two and I did oops, a big memories page for July because in July was when we moved in together and it was when we also took our vacation together our first vacation so it was a lot of things happening in July and this is actually from the last week of June until a little bit into August because I had this huge page to fill in and so I just fill it in with photos of us and things that we did and it just really it's just really wholesome to look at it and see everything that we did when we start living together. Then we move on with August. And at this time, I wasn't doing weekly spreads because, again, I was on vacation, so I didn't have much to do. But we start with August. And August was like a slow month because I went back to work and we started on like the roller coaster of living together and doing things together. So I had to reorganize myself a little bit. So I did my monthly to-do list on the side and here are my memories for August. And as you can see, I was um, running out of paper. So my pages are really small. And as you can see, I was running out of paper for my printers. So all the photos are really small. Um, but yeah, these are a couple of things that we did in August. And this team was really like bland, to be honest, because I, was feeling really nervous because of my wireless exam and so I just needed my bullet journal to be as simple as possible. I did a couple of weekly spreads. These were rolling weeklies because I didn't want to have a structure for my weekly spread so I just put on the days and I was just filling in with the days but it has a little bit of structure as you can see and yeah I was just doing things pretty consistently and simple. Uh, because my exam was coming up and I was extremely stressed. Then I have the same week again, just for simplicity and efficiency. The rest of August here, and then we start with September. And September was another month that it was awful because I didn't pass my exam, but I understood what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, to be honest. Like, that's basically the gist of it all. I failed my wireless exam and I wanted to focus on content creation and marketing. Um, from now on and that's exactly what I did so it was really hard to take that step but thankfully my bullet journal was here for that so I kept it extremely simple again just like I did in August but I did yellow because yellow for me is the color that I associate with changing and blooming into new things and growing so I did yellow for September because I was either going to pass my exam and keep on that path or fail my exam and decide what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. That's why I used yellow for September. I played a little bit with the weekly spreads and this one I did on camera. I didn't really like how much space I was wasting with decorations and like the empty space that I couldn't use. So I didn't enjoy this page at all. So much so that the next weekly spread, it was just me doing uh, different headers, like a rolling weekly. And I did a quick unfinished list to prepare for our Italy trip that we were going to take in October. Speaking of which, here is my October theme. And this was when, as you can see, like comparing July with October, as you can see in October was when I decided to get better at my themes and play with art and with content creation a bit more. And I feel like it was one of the most, uh, I would say fun, but challenging times of the year, because I knew that I always wanted to do content creation and art as my job, but getting to actually do that and like go ahead and try different things in your bullet journal and create content with it, and put all of your faith and energy into that. It was really scary, but it worked out really well and it's still working really well. I'm really happy where I am right now on my channel and social media and such. Um, then yeah, I used the washi tape shop Halloween collection, 
washi tapes and I did a full Halloween theme for October. And this theme was one of the first themes that I did more focused on art and still using my bullet journal in an efficient way, but not really focusing on things that were stressing me out and just do what I felt like it was the best for me. So I have my cover page here and my to-do list for the month. And as you can see, the quote is never be afraid of change, which was something that I was going through at the time. And now I'm just really glad that I went through that change and everything worked out in my favor. This is my Italy memories page. I really love this page because we did a bunch of fun things and we visited a bunch of things in Italy together. And I also met Perlita, which is the creator of my logo. We get to met in Venice and we took a trip a little walk together, we would eat some gelato together. It was really fun. Um, but we visit three cities and it was just so incredible to take this trip outside Portugal together. Then I have my Halloween list of activities. We have movies and activities. Um, I was meant to add some pictures here, but to be honest, I just didn't have the time. Now it's too late, so I just didn't add those. But our Halloween living together was so fun. I'm really glad of everything that we did together. We carved some pumpkins. It was just so, so much fun to do these activities as a couple. And then I started with my rolling weekly spreads. And these weekly spreads were... One of the things that gave me joy in my bullet journal, because I was doing fun headers and using a bunch of stickers, but I was keeping it efficient and I was not wasting a ton of space in my bullet journal, which is the perfect balance for me when a page is colorful enough and it doesn't take up that much space. So I really loved using this um, layout and these decorations for my weekly spreads for October. Then here I did my last week of October and I did a shop brainstorm section here just because I was going to change a few things on my shop for Christmas and I wanted to brainstorm it here. So then we have November and November was a month that I decided to try with watercolors in this notebook and really like have fun with it and I used some stickers from Creative Fabrica and I did watercolors in my bullet journal and I'm really happy how it turned out because I always do themes that are just like sticking things together because it's faster and easy and that was just not what I wanted for November and I wanted to do some watercolors and play with colors so that's exactly what I did and even though the layouts are pretty simple this was something that I really wanted to do and I'm really glad that I tried it once again. I did my habits for November that I ended up not using because I was just not focusing on my habits at the time and my plan for 2024, which was not really developed here uh, because I did most of it in Notion. But yeah, I'm really glad that I did this page in my bullet journal nonetheless. And I started doing my digital pages for my shop. That didn't sell really well, but I'm really glad that I also tried that thing for my shop. Basically from October until now, it's just about trying new things and not being scared of failure, basically. So that's what I did for November and I did a weekly spread on camera that didn't turn out that well because of the amount of space that I wasted and another weekly spread that didn't work out as well. I don't really like to divide my weekly spreads between like weeklies. I prefer to do just rolling weekly spreads and for December I did that. I'm going to show you what I did. But these types of weekly spreads that it's just like two pages for seven days in a to-do list don't work out for me. So a lot of space was wasted and I don't like that. Then I tried a rolling weekly spread. As you can see, I was able to fit more than seven days and the headers were a bit off. They were too big. Um, but when I started, you know, at this point I was regretting them. There was nothing I can do. So I just kept doing them. And yeah, even though I used a couple of decorations, I didn't feel like I wasted a lot of space except for this part. But then I believe November finished and I wanted to move into December, so I left this space blank. But this type of rolling weekly spread, it's what works for me the best in my bullet journal. Then we did December and this was one of the... One of my favorite themes of this year. I normally don't do like Christmassy themes 
in my bullet journal but I was just feeling really Christmassy because it was the first Christmas that we were going to spend in our house so I really wanted to go all in for Christmas and I did this using the washi tape shops new collection for Christmas and it was just so pretty I loved it so much so I did a bunch of Christmas designs and I used this quote that says everything you need is in within you just a reminder that if I want to change something or try new things it's in my power to do it so this quote was really important for me and I did a smaller to-do list because it was Christmas time I knew that I was not going to be that busy so my to-do list was a bit smaller and I did my habits here for content creation and my marketing course and they are not updated but I have been semi-consistent with them which makes me really happy here is my page for Christmas and this is basically a to-do list of things that we wanted to do throughout our Christmas, our first Christmas together, living together. Um, we didn't do a lot of Christmassy things, but I still liked everything that we did together this time. And at the end of the year, or maybe in January, I will have my Christmas memories photos all in here. I just have a lot of fun making these types of pages because they are memories in your blue journal and it's just so important to me. And then this is my first rolling weekly spread and as you can see the space is used up really well. I still have time for decorations, I still had space for uh, this week's to-do list and I have a bunch of days in here and as you can see I was able to fit more than seven. And it's just great, like for me this is what a weekly spread or weekly logs in your bullet journals should look like. They are fun, but they are efficient. And this is exactly what I feel like my bullet journal should be. So I'm cutting weekly spreads out of my bullet journal for 2024 for sure. But I really like how this one turned out because then I did a similar one and I just feel like they looked better. You know, they look better like this and I really like to do rolling weekly spreads in my bullet journal as you can see. I basically did the same thing but I added the lines with stockings at the top and I added a bunch of stickers from the washi tape shop washi tapes and it was just really fun to do these weekly spreads um late at night you know with some tea just journaling a little bit and then this is like the last one of the last pages uh of my notebook as you can see because for these past days I just wanted a space to put all of my to-do's and divided them by days and so here I left all of this space for my to-do lists for the last days of 2023 and here I just have some space for the days so yeah we are on the 29th and I still have only three days to fill in but yeah I just wanted to finish the notebook with an efficient weekly spread without any drawings I don't need that right now so yeah, those are all of my pages for 2023. I really hope you enjoyed this flip through. If you have any questions about themes and supplies and how I do certain pages or why I didn't include something in my bullet journal, leave them in the comments below. I'm always happy to help you with that. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out my shop in the future and to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.